Hello, and welcome to this lesson on the electric field of a sheet of charge. So, so far, we've almost got all of the different types of charges that we're going to look at in this course. Um, the first one was a point charge, which we denoted as Q. The second one was a volume charge, which we denoted as rho sub V. The next one was a line charge, which we denoted as rho sub L. And finally, right here, we're going to talk about a sheet charge. And as we'll see, it is probably the simplest one that we've dealt with so far. And we're going to denote it as rho sub S. So let's talk about what we mean by a sheet of charge. So I throw down a three-dimensional axis, something like that. A sheet of charge extends as a plane infinitely in every direction. So we might have a sheet that exists along the xy plane. And it has a charge density, rho sub s that's given in coulombs per meters squared. And like with the rest of these, we want to calculate um, the electric field at any given point that's caused by this sheet of charge. So we might have a point that's at some position x, y, and z. And we want to calculate the electric field experienced at that point caused by that sheet. And as it makes, and it makes a little bit of intuitive sense that the electric field, since it's coming from all directions, will emit orthogonally straight out of the sheet at right angles out of the sheet to the point. And the equation for the electric field of our sheet is really quite simple. It's the charge density, rho sub s, over two times epsilon naught. Notice that we lost uh, pi and we lost the distance, right? The sheet doesn't care at all since it's infinite charge in infinite directions. It's pushing out infinitely. It does no longer decay according to distance away. And that's going to be times the unit vector a sub n, where the n stands for normal or orthogonal. to the sheet of charge. So let's go ahead and jump right in and let's work an example. Suppose we have three sheets of charge. We have the first one, S1, which has three nanocoulombs per meter squared, and it exists at Z equals negative 4. And we have S2, which has 6 nanocoulombs per meter squared, and it's at z equals 1. All of these sheets exist on the xy plane. And finally, number 3, sheet 3, has negative 8 nanocoulombs per meter squared, and it exists at z equals positive and we want to calculate the field at a point at point negative 2, 4, and 5. Now, let's go ahead and draw this out. And as we draw this out, we'll see that we don't actually care about the x and y components here. So if we have our axes and we say that this first one is the xy plane, and we're now only interested in the z axis because that's where our planes live. Now, let's go ahead and plot each of these sheets of charge. We'll plot them as a line. And the first one is at negative four, two, three, four. So we'll put it here. 
and that is positive 3 nanocoulombs per meter squared, and that's S1. The next one, S2, exists at Z equals positive 1. So that's right. Whoa. So that's right there at Z equals positive 1. It's S2, and it is 6 nanocoulombs. nanocoulombs per meter squared. And the last one, sheet 3, exists at C equals positive 4. So that's S3, and it has negative 8 nanocoulombs per meter squared. Now our point exists at negative 2, 4, and 5. Now we really don't care so much about the negative 2, 4, and 5, or negative 2 and 4, but we do care about the 5, right? That's z equals, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that's at z equals positive 5. Now the dimensions, or excuse me, and now the polarity of these fields is going to matter when we calculate the field. We'll consider a positive field, a positive field moves away, and a negative field moves towards. So what that means is that since 8 is negative, or sheet 3 is negative 8 nanocoulombs per meter squared, that means that the field is moving away from our point. So we'll actually see this as positive, whereas the positive fields are pushing out towards, away from the sheet, which means they're pushing in towards the point which means that these will all be looked at as negative. So the negative signs in the charge or the, or the signs in the charge don't really play a role in the calculation. They sort of set up the frame of reference that we use to define whether or not we're going to consider them as negative or positive. So let's go ahead and make our calculation. So we know that our field, just like with point charges, just like with volume charges and line charges, um, when we have multiple sources of charge, we add them all up. So the electric field is going to be equal to the field caused by 1 plus the field caused by 2 plus the field caused by 3. And so that's going to be equal to charge 1. We're going to consider to be negative since it's emitting towards our point. That's going to be negative 3 times 10 to the negative 9 times AZ, the unit vector A sub Z, because remember, we're talking about orthogonal distances, and these guys are moving along the Z axes towards our point. So our unit vector is going to be A sub Z. So that's times A sub Z over... 2 times epsilon naught, 8.854 times 10 to the negative 12. And that'll be plus E2, which is caused by sheet 2, which is negative by our frame of reference, 6 nanocoulombs. So it's going to be plus negative 6 nanocoulombs, or excuse me, 6, let's use scientific notation, times 10 to the negative 9. This is also unit vector A sub Z over... 2 times 8.854 times 10 to the negative 12. Plus, now this one, while it was negative, it's moving away from our point, so we're going to treat it as positive. So po plus positive 8 times 10 to the negative 9 times the unit vector a sub z over 
2 times 8.854 times 10 to the negative 12. So all that's left to do is a little bit of algebra and calculation. Let's combine some terms. So we're actually going to get 8 times 10 to the negative 9 minus 3 times 10 to the negative 9 minus 6 times 10 to the negative 9. I just rearrange them to make them a little prettier. Times the unit vector a sub z over 2 times 8.854 times 10 to the negative 12. And then you punch that into the calculator, you're going to get that e is equal to negative 56.47 times the unit vector a sub z. And there is our electric field at that point caused by those three charges. So personally, I think sheet charges are about the easiest of all of them. So, uh, but as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Thank you.